everyone. This is Dr. Ramon Lazar. I thank you for watching, and um, I'm excited to have today on the show uh, one of my colleagues. I've worked with her before. She's an occupational therapist, and uh, she worked in various settings, um, what inpatient and acute. And so yep. what we're going to talk about today is how can therapy help with uh, chronic pain? So the, who I have on the show today is Fabioli Negrete, and uh, she's going to talk a little bit about herself. Um, why did she become an occupational therapist? And then we're going to ask a series of questions. Yeah. Hey. Hello, my name is Fabiola Negrete, and I'm one of the occupational therapists around. Um, I've been doing this for about 19 years, and I love it. So I started getting interested in therapy because I just have a little niche of wanting to help people, you know, get better in just any other, any way that I could possibly can. And occupational therapy really caught my eye because it doesn't just help with one thing, occupation, people think work, but in reality, we all have a job, which is taking care of ourselves. So the way that I saw it when it caught my eye is really pediatrics, you know, little kids, elderly, in between everything, we all have a job of wanting to take care of ourselves, becoming independent. And that's really the focus of occupational therapy, trying to help people to overcome whatever is keeping them from being independent. So that's the key word right there. So anybody that's having any kind of issues um, at all, whether they were born with them or that happened throughout, you know, time because of age or because of an accident or something like that, we find what it is that is actually keeping them from doing the things that they want to do, that they like to do. And so we help them get to be independent and be able to do those things again. So um, that's in the in a nutshell what we do. Of course, there's a lot more detail in that, but um, we work, like, like I said, in, in various, and like Ramona said, various, various settings from pediatrics, outpatient and homes and outpatient for elderly, inpatient in the hospital, rehab, what have you, psychiatric. It's, it's a broad, broad spectrum. But um, definitely want to help people. One of the key things is to keep them, you know, from being pain free so that they can be able to perform their daily activities, whatever those tasks are. So um, that's my focus as an occupational therapist with whoever it is that I'm working with. Uh, right now, I am working in an inpatient rehab setting, um, it, but I'm also helping out in uh, with the pediatrics outpatient uh, setting as well. So trying to keep my expertise intact with with both, um, uh, you know, spectrum stuff ages. So it keeps it fun. I, I love it. That's great. Yeah. Uh, like you said, we are here to help. Um, and we have like different settings that we can work in to be able to help each individual, um, especially when you're in a acute setting and people are having pain, you know, that is very helpful for them to get rid of that pain really quickly. And so it's always um, very interesting because we get a different, um, you know, type of population and then diagnosis to be able to help those individuals. How can occupational therapy help with people that are having like chronic pain uh, example is like neck pain or you know if it comes to that like low back uh, primarily for you probably be someone comes in and say they're having problems with their neck and then you know you probably do like an assessment how can you help that individual mm -hmm. well you know it, it, more than anything what you said is really assess what it is where is that coming from what are those things that the person is doing more consistently that is probably initiating that pain so for example a lot of us may be using a lot of computer or the phone or just for you know a specific kind of job so depending on what posture you're been having to hold during the day 
for how long and the importance of that activity. For example, like if it's your job, you absolutely have to do it. You know, if it's just because you love using the phone, which we all do, then maybe we can find a schedule of when it could be, you know, when you can take breaks or if you need to minimize the, the time that you're using it. So we want to first find out what it is that's causing that pain where is it coming from maybe you had an accident maybe you fell and uh or something like that and some movements that you don't remember doing you know jerking of some way or maybe even like falling asleep in the wrong position it happens to all of us you know overstretching sometimes that happens and you get those bricks in the neck so um it really depends on where it started but um sometimes though we don't realize it until so it's too late and sometimes that pain is just it just feels like nothing keeps it away so um we definitely assess and we ask all kinds of questions and um seeing if there's anything that is going to keep you from doing certain exercises that might help with that because there are exercises that you can do to stretch those muscles to keep them limber and to get that range of motion that motion of the neck um uh functional so be able to use it you know with all the activities that you need to do without that pain or with minimized pain but um definitely want to know what cost it right um but saying that you know what the cause of the pain is um so talking about the neck you know if someone comes in most like you're talking about um individuals especially you know even us as clinicians mm -hmm. we're always typing and so we're in, in that posture where it's like we round it down our head is down and you know we might not have the best desk at the time but we're definitely utilizing each space where we're at um and then sometimes you know get some pain in our neck so what are some really good stretches we can do um that can help relieve that pain mm -hmm. well first of all one thing that you really want to keep in mind is that the and of course a lot of people you know that don't really go to to or well let me back up a lot of us are google experts <laughs> So most yeah. of us, <laughs> something starts hurting in Google. What is it? So many people might already know the anatomy of what the neck looks like. So I just want to point out that before starting to teach some exercises, you want to keep in mind what that neck looks like. It's, you know, a bunch of little vertebrae, a little, little bones that, you know, are in the back and you can probably feel it, but there's those top two that make your head go around in all kinds of motions. So one thing that you definitely, definitely want to keep in mind is that there, it is very sensitive and you don't want to, you know, do any kind of motions that's going to you know, maybe hurt it more and pinch a nerve or even, you know, it could be as easily as, you know, pop out a joint or something. So whenever you're doing exercises, you want to do it in sections. So whenever you've seen a lot of people do rounding of the head, you know, shaking the head to the sides or, you know, in, in circles, um, that's not good. You want to do that in parts. So if you're wanting to stretch the neck, you want to stretch it in parts. So looking forward and just giving that back of your, your neck a really good stretch, that's a really good one to start with because not only is it going to stretch the neck muscles but it stretch all the back of you know the muscles all on along your back the middle of your back so that's a really good one to start with and just kind of limber that up a little bit so you'll look down you always want to hold for about 10 seconds at a time before you slowly come up no jerking you don't want to jerk your muscle you want to nice and slow stretch those muscles and then you look forward again. So don't go straight up all the way. So you're just gonna look forward again. And then you look up. And that's gonna stretch the opposite of those back muscles. You're gonna stretch and look up nice and slow. Hold it for 10 seconds. So you're just looking up. You don't have to put a lot of pressure. And if it starts hurting, of course, just go to where you know you can. You don't wanna overstretch. 10 seconds at a time. 
All right. And then you go the, the side. So ear to your, to your shoulder. You're just going to turn to the side. You don't want to lift your, your shoulder because that's cheating. <laughs> you want to stretch as much as you can on your side. So this right here, stretching the muscles on this side of your neck. So you want to just kind of drop your ear down. Make sure your cheek is, this cheek is pointing upward. Your chin is going with it. So you're not turning your head. It's just straight down to the side. And that's going to stretch this side of your muscles real nicely. So you hold that for 10 seconds and you always go back to the middle. Always, always go back to center. And then the other side, same thing. Chin goes straight up and you hold it for about 10 seconds and back to the middle. Always back to the middle. You don't want to just go side to side like, you know, um, like I guess we've done a lot of us, you know, we've done when we're dancing and things, but <laughs> we're stretching. We don't want to do that. <laughs> All right. Another one, you're going to turn your head over your shoulder as much as you can. Again, you're not going to tilt it. You're not going to do all kinds of weird stuff. You're just going to look right over your shoulder. Always hold for 10 seconds, just as much as you can. Keep your head straight. Don't tilt it. Just keep your head straight back to the middle. All right. And then over to your other shoulder. 10 seconds. So those exercises, you can do about maybe five sets. You can do them while you're watching TV. One good thing to remember is like if you're watching TV or something during commercial time, I always tell my patients during commercial time, that's your time to do a little bit of stretching exercises, stand up, you know, relax, you know, do some kind of strengthening anything or stretching. So if you're having some neck issues, those exercises are really, really simple, but very effective if you're doing properly. So make sure that you're taking your time. Make sure that you're not overstretching for too long because then you get dizzy if you're overstretching down or you can get a little cramp. <laughs> so you want to make sure you take your time. 10 seconds, uh, you know, a movement. It's good enough for, you know, for the time of you doing that, that movement. Again, when you're doing, you know, you, well, you've heard of doing circles, you know, around with your head. I wouldn't recommend doing a full circle. I would probably do, you know, just half a circle and then rewind <laughs> go back over and then to do the back you come back to the middle bring your head back and then you can round it side to side back to the middle and looking forward so no don't do all you know a bunch of you know circles i'm doing it but i'm not doing the full you know and i can i'm not bringing my head all the way where it got where it can go because that's that can actually hurt your that little top of your of your vertebrae of your of your neck um, joints it it can hurt it you can hurt it badly <laughs> so take my word for it you can Google it <laughs> but those are some good simple exercises that you can do and I I teach a lot just about every one of my patients that I encounter those are really good ones to do we all get cranks in the neck we all sleep wrong we all we're all always looking down sometimes even you right now watching you know as soon as i say straighten up or something about your posture you know you're gonna stretch your back and want to sit up straight as soon as you hear somebody say even if they're not talking to us you know we hear sitting up straight it's automatic so uh, you know just being real conscious of our posture and doing those exercises at least once a day, you know, even if it's just once a day. Um, but getting in a routine of doing that, it would definitely help from having that hunchback or from uh, really getting those those cramps on your on the back of your neck or the top of your of your back will really really be very helpful. So I hope those help, and I hope those are you know those are good ones to to try. So very simple, you know, really that there's really not many other ones that we can do because of the, the, the way that the neck goes, you know, when you're moving your head side to side, it's not really this that's moving as the top of those, uh, of that, the axis and the atlas, that's what they're called. Those top uh, two joints. That's really what's doing it. It's not this, this doesn't move forward and backwards. So um, it, 
just got to be real careful with those. But those are really all the range that your neck can actually go or that I would recommend, you know, trying, especially for stretching exercises. But I really hope that those help. And I would recommend everyone to do those, whether you have pain or not. That's just a good stretching to do, especially early in the morning when you do that good stretch. When you wake up and stretch all your muscles, sitting up straight at the edge of your bed and doing some of those stretching will be very helpful. Yeah, that's that's really insightful. You know, it's especially with people that are, you know, waking up in the morning, they might feel stiff in their neck, um, just getting mm-hmm. that neck mobile. Uh, for the morning and just getting up, it can be really, really helpful because a lot of people do suffer from arthritis and, you know, they had some past surgery like a fusion to their cervical Mm -hmm. spine and they're very limited with their range of motion and those muscles get tight. And so when they get tight, it's just really hard to get them to, you know, do those motions that you show, but Uh, just doing little by little, definitely, like you said, can help like the 10 second hold. Is there if you mm-hmm. don't have to go all the way to thoroughly, you don't you can just mm-hmm. do 10 seconds and then hold it. Yes. <laughs> doing five yes. reps of your repetition. Yeah, 30 seconds is a long time, you know, when you're counting and holding. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So yes. what happens like if they do one of those motion and they start to feel like some nerve pain down their arm? Yeah. Should they keep doing it or they should talk to their doctor? No. So uh, you definitely want to know with your doctor, I mean before you're doing any kind of exercise, if you're already following up with your doctor, if you had an accident or like Mona said, if you have a fusion or some kind of surgery to your neck, you want to be cleared with your doctor for those exercises in the first place. So, so if you've already had some neck issues and um, I would definitely clear it and, you know, with doctor and say, hey, is it okay if I do some neck exercises on my own and you can explain what you've seen or, or what exercises you want to do? Um, but if you never had any issues and uh, you're doing one of those stretches and you all of a sudden like, oh, you know, I got stuck or <laughs> I felt weird or something like that. Yes, I would definitely call um, the doctor. It could be, you know, it, it could be something as simple as arthritis or, you know, you definitely don't want to impinge a nerve at all. So if you uh, get, you know, get your neck back up and, you know, then that's what we don't want to do. We want to do it real slow um, because you don't want to jerk and then, you know, get stuck in the position, that, you know, it's not going to feel good later. But um, I would, yeah, I would definitely not continue if you start feeling, you know, some radiating pain to your arm or something like that. And I would call, um, sometimes they recommend call the doctor and talk to the nurse, explain what's going on. And if they say, okay, just give it a few or is it still going on or something like that, maybe there's something behind that that you might need to get it checked out. Um, If you're already having neck issues and um, you haven't been to the doctor, I would probably go and check it out first before starting doing any kind of stretching. You really want to go to a professional first to be assessed. Sometimes they'll send you straight to physical therapy the the primary doctor would do that just to see so that they can assess and see where that pain may be coming from or what the limitations are and if your pt says you know go and and maybe get go to your doctor and tell them to do a further testing or something like that or um any kind of whatever they find then yeah definitely follow those instructions but um if you're if you're if you've never had any neck issues, but you have that stiffness, these are really good exercises. So I would just watch out for that for sure. Those are definitely precautions to take into consideration. Um, if you've had, you know, any tumors or cysts or something like that, I would, again, just clear it with the doctor first that those are okay. They sound simple, but you know, they can be, they can affect you if, you know, if you're doing them wrong or if there's something, you know, behind the you know any issues that you've had before if that makes any sense yeah that makes sense uh because you know you what you learn on people watch videos and you know these exercises are great and you know going to help to relieve some of the tension that you're having on your muscles but Mm -hmm. yeah if you're having other issues before you do these like what she was talking about nerve pain and then any other 
uh, like a cyst or, you know, some type of other trauma that you're suffering, you definitely want to check with your doctors because all mm -hmm. these stretches are suggestions. Okay, mm -hmm. and if you have any questions for us, you can reach out to us. We'll have um, in the description box below, I'll have all our contact information, and then we'll be happy to help and guide you with these different type of exercises. So with that being said, uh, Fabiola, how can we find you on social media? I have Facebook and I have Instagram. So I think the um, address is there on the on that link to this video, is it? absolutely the link in the description yeah. box it is um definitely on there and then uh you'll have all her information how to reach out to her on instagram on yep. facebook so yep and we will You're have welcome. yeah absolutely so i appreciate that uh any other yeah. suggestions for uh the viewers that are having chronic pain uh whether it be the neck or the shoulder Mom, anything else? Yeah, for sure. You know, a lot of repetition, repetition of a certain activity, even though we don't think about it, because sometimes it's it's just an automatic thing that we do on a daily basis. Something as simple as household activities that we do normally and we don't think about, you know, how we're doing things. So if say your back starts hurting, how are you sending when you're washing your dishes, something as simple as that. Or if you're doing any other, you know, uh, uh, chores, or if you're at work and you're doing that repetition of turning a certain way for, you know, all day long, and we don't think about that. Those are things that may be actually the culprits of some pain that you might have. So always think about what is it that I'm doing? If you're starting to get some kind of pain anywhere, anywhere in your body, it doesn't have to be upper body, anywhere in your body, always think back and say, okay, what have I been doing every day? And, or what did I do yesterday? Or what did I do today? When did it start? And how long did, you know, have I had that pain? Because we don't think about that until it gets really bad. And then, you know, it's too late sometimes, or sometimes you just end up having to have surgery or, you know, things like that. So you want to prevent, prevent, prevent. You want to always analyze, take a minute to think about what movements have I been doing lately? Um, my back's starting to hurt more. So what have you been doing? Oh, well, you know, maybe I was doing this exercises at the gym and maybe I wasn't, you know, tying up my core, my, my tummy, or maybe I was overdoing weights or something like that. So you always want to make sure to go back and think about what is it that I've been doing? I'm getting tingling on my hand. Hmm, maybe I'm tapping too much. Maybe it's the position of my hand, you know, so a lot of things are a lot of pain comes from things that we do on a regular basis that mm -hmm. become so routine that we don't think about that that could probably be the what's starting it so always thinking back about what is it that i've been doing if you get any sudden pains sudden pains you know cause they start but sometimes we don't pay attention to them and they're really not sudden pains they're just you know more intense pains so you want to think back and say okay how long have i actually have been you know has this been bothering me so um think back always to what is it that i'm doing you know on a normal basis and if you're not having any pain but you're doing things on a routine maybe sometimes mixing it up a little bit you know if you're if you type and it hasn't bothered you maybe you know start taking breaks before it starts bothering you you know maybe make sure that you're doing some back stretches or neck stretches before it starts bothering you. So prevention is always the best thing. So if you don't have pain, prevent it. If you already have some pain, think back and say, you know, and see where, you know, what have I been doing? What do I think might be causing it? And then that way you can approach your doctor and have a little bit more information and they can help you better rather than waiting to see, well, let's wait another month and see what it is that you're doing. <laughs> so, uh, you know, staying on top of, you know, what we're doing on a normal basis with movement, it's very helpful. Yes, no, that was good advice. And, uh, you know, hopefully people are going to take that information that you have provided. Um, and because it's a wealth of knowledge, you know, that we're just given to you today. So, and um, mm -hmm. I just want to tell you, everyone, thank you for uh, being here and watching uh, this interview with Miss Fabiola. And she is just, you know, just happy to uh, help you guys out. If you have any type of questions, 
um, about if occupational therapy or uh, ways to prevent um, chronic pain or even if it's like a neck pain, shoulder pain, or if you just want to reach out just to say hello to her, I'm sure she'll be happy to do that. Uh, so if you're new to my channel, I would ask you that you uh, subscribe. You just hit the red button uh, and you'll be uh, part of my my community. And then I uh, like this video so that we can see more of me on YouTube and Miss Fabiola as well. And also hit the notification bell. You would get the uh, first notification that I uploaded a video. So guys, thank you for watching and you take care. Until next time. Bye-bye.